What's up guys, it's Mark here with Wheels and Wrenches. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick um, four link tutorial. Um, it explains a little bit about some basic four link geometry. Um, it's more concerned about uh, upper and lower link lengths more than anything. Um, it more of a relationship to uh, link length versus upper and lower versus what happens to your pinion angle and you can scale everything down. Um, what I did here was my lower link is 46 inches, which scaled down to one tenth scale is 4.6 inches. And then the upper link is 40 inches, which scaled down to one tenth scales uh, four inches exact. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration. I'll show you a couple different link lengths. Um, I'll tell you the link lengths. but this is more for Jeeps, buggies, um, any type of off-road four-link uh, build. So bottom link angle, anytime you're building a four-link should be seven degrees, should be your target. If it's flatter than that, great. If it's steeper than that, you can do eight degrees, you can do nine degrees, you can get away with probably 10 degrees, but I would not exceed 10 degrees on your lower link angle. Your upper link angle, you can have it parallel to the ground, ideally, or higher at the axle, uh, which is even better, in my opinion. Um, I've tried both. My rig responded better when the axle end of the upper link was higher than the frame mount. Um, so inverted, if you will. And my front link, my front uppers are exactly the same. So in this demonstration, this first demonstration here, and it's sitting at ride height right now. So this line right here represents ride height. This uh, first angled line represents seven degrees, which is parallel with the lower link. This upper um, line represents zero degrees. That would be flat with the ground. Um, and as you see, this first demonstration, I have the links parallel which is more of a street configuration, less of a off-road configuration. I want, to, I want you to see what happens when you run your links parallel. And it's very, very different, it's very drastic. This here is the transfer case output to a rough, a rough estimate of where the transfer case output would be. So you could see how this, how the pinion stays in relationship throughout the travel to the transfer case output as I move this up and down. So keep your eyes on the pinion. So we're at ride height right now. We're at full droop. As you can see, the pinions pointed down here. Ride height, uh, ride height, it looks okay. Slightly compressed looks okay. Um, you could see the uh, the pinion stays relatively flat. It doesn't change a whole lot. So the angle of the pinion, when your links are parallel, the angle of the pinion stays relatively the same throughout the travel. Now you can do this mock up with your with your four link setup when you go to build them um, to see what the pinion's going to do. It give you a rough idea. It'll give you a very very good indicator of what how, what your suspension is going to do throughout the travel. So I'm going to switch these links around real quick, and then uh, we'll get back to you here in a minute. Okay, guys, this is the same link setup. 40 inch upper, 46 inch lower. This is a good configuration link lengthwise in relationship to one another. The 40 inch upper is 87% the length of the lower. When you're building your upper links, um, the separation at the axle is always going to be 10 to 12 inches in, in the ballpark of 10 to 12 inches. Your separation at the frame, at the chassis, could be anywhere from 4 to 6 inches depending on how your chassis is set up, depending on where you uh, have available spaces to mount your links on the chassis. This configuration is uh, the same as we just saw in the first one, 
of the lower, except now the upper link is no longer parallel to the lower link. The lower link is still at seven degrees. Now the upper link is at zero degrees. It's parallel with the ground. This is how I set mine up initially. And then I ended up lowering, I put adjustable mount, mounts, uh, mounting brackets at the chassis so I could adjust the angle a little bit. So I ended up lowering my upper link at the chassis and it seemed to help uh, traction a little bit. But I'll show you what the pinion does. As you saw last time, the pinion stayed fairly the same throughout the travel. Watch this one. Pinion's pointing down at the out transfer case output. Pointing at the transfer case output. Dropped a little, changed a little, not quite at the transfer case output um, anymore. But I don't think anybody has that much down travel anyway. So this is the this is the travel. This is the main travel you're concerned about right right about through here. So as you can see, it much be it it points uh, at the transfer case out out output much better uh, with the with the link uh, parallel with the ground. I'm going to invert the link now in this next one, then we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, guys. Here we go. I have the upper uh, 40 inch link. Now it's no longer parallel with the ground, it's higher at the axle, and we're gonna run it through its travel and see what it does. The pivot points change, so look what, look what it's doing. The, um, so when it up travels, now the pinion's pointing, pointing down somewhat. At right height, it looks, it looks fine. And then at droop, it also looks fairly, it looks okay. Um, You know, messing with that upper link changes anti-squat big time. Uh, messing with the length of it and messing with the angle of it changes anti-squat. So that's something you can experiment with. All right, I'm going to make one. I'm going to change the upper link of the four link right now, the upper length of the four link right now. All right, guys. I just noticed something as I was putting this together. These link lengths are both now the same, 46 inches. But you got to look at the back here. Now, look how much further forward on the front of the axle that uh, on the front of the axle tube, the lower link mounts so much so much further forward than the upper link mounts which would be on the center of the pumpkin on the center top of the pumpkin so that could be a six inch difference in itself so the pivot points on the chassis end are, are different um but yet these link lengths are both the same and this surprised me a little bit um I guess this would be considered 100%. The link lengths are both identical. And look how it, look how it behaves. So it's pointed actually on droop, right height. On droop, it's pointed it's pointed pretty good. It stays a, it stays a, a nice true arc throughout the range of travel. So look, even even fully fully compressed, it's still pointed directly at the transfer case output. At ride height, it's pointed at the output, you know. And then on droop, it does drop. It does drop a little, but that's to be expected. Um, and this is with the um, upper link parallel with the ground at zero degrees and the lower link at uh, seven degrees. Um, this was a little bit of a surprising outcome. I kind of like it, to be honest with you. Um, I know mine aren't set up like this, but you got to take into consideration this distance here from where it mounts on the top of the diff to where it mounts on the axle tube and where it mounts on the axle tube. You know, that can play a role because that could be a significant, significant distance, I'd say. I'd say it could be up to six inches um, depending on how you mounted, mounted your, your tabs. So that is now with the same 46 inch and 46 inch upper and lower. Now the upper link is inverted. 
uh, axle end higher than the link than the chassis end and we're sitting at ride height now we're going to go up it's pointed down pinion angles pointed down it's good there and then as it drop droops it's also good so this wouldn't be a bad situation traditional four link with the with the shock mounted on the axle tube um, you have approximately eight inches eight to ten inches of down travel you know in six six to eight inches of up travel depending on what length shocks you have depending on how you have them set up excuse me it could be um it could be any of those numbers so most of the time rock crawlers um favor more down travel than up travel so down travel you could see pinion still looks pretty good it's pointed at the, the output um but and then obviously at ride height it's good and then as we go up it does start to point down somewhat but i don't think you're going to use that much up travel anyway so kind of like this i do kind of like the equal length links but i'm going to show an extreme example of a short a short short upper link and you'll see how bad it looks it's very it's obviously bad from from the from the get-go all right guys here is the same 46 inch lower at seven degrees the upper is 36 inches now 10 inches shorter it's a big difference in lengths plus this is offset back so it changes things quite a bit upper link in this in this angle is uh parallel with the ground um but watch what the Watch what the pinion does on the with the short upper leg. So it it points it points very far down, almost um, with very very little up travel. Very little up travel it takes for that pinion to start pointing. It almost stays at a right angle to the lower link as it up travels. Right there, it obviously looks okay, and then as it down travels. It doesn't point anywhere near the transfer case output so really the only the only good spot in the travel is at ride height and right up maybe right there slight a little bit of up travel that's really not that bad up travel actually doesn't doesn't look horrible but then it, you don't use add nearly as much up travel as you do down travel so down travels I'd, I'd put in the more important category and that yeah that's that's not good there. I'm going to try inverting. Um, I'm going to try changing up the angle of the upper link. And I'll show you the results here in a sec. I just uh, lowered the chassis end of the short upper link. 36 inch upper, 46 inch lower. And what an extreme angle. Yeah, it's pointing down here now. My ride height, obviously, it's fine. And then... Down travel. Hmm. It's not horrendous. It's not horrendous for some reason. It's a lot better than the parallel when it was uh, more parallel with the lower link. Um, a lot better than when it was uh, parallel with the ground. Let's try this. I'm curious now. Parallel with each other. Hmm. Oh boy, that's that's where it gets bad. I was gonna say up travel it didn't look up travel it looked good. Down travel, it's absolutely horrendous. This link is pulling is pulling the top of the diff forward because it's so short, it can't keep up with the radius of the long low. So it's pulling the front of the diff, the top of the diff forward, which is dropping the pinion angle. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, let's see here. I like this one the best. This one was by far the best with the short upper. So good, good, well, nah, I wouldn't call that good. That's pointing down here. Down travel, it looks down travel, it doesn't look horrendous. I think for down travel, it would work, but I would never want to run a link that short on top. Let's go back to what we learned from the first couple and see and compare these while it's fresh in our brains. 
I think this is my favorite. Um, it's kind of a cross between the ones I showed you. When I inverted the upper link for these for demonstration purposes, I inverted it at a fairly steep angle uh, just to show cause and effect. Well, this is the 46 inch lower and the 40 inch upper. And the upper is inverted now, meaning it's slightly higher at the axle, but by just a smidge. It's maybe running at like two degrees. The upper is 87% of the lower in this configuration. I think this was my favorite because watch the pinion, watch what the pinion angle does through travel. So that's a ton of compression right there. It's pointed directly at the output of the transfer case, directly. That would be maybe six inches of up travel right there. It's pointed directly at the output. That's probably close to 12 inches of up travel. It's pointed at the output. Ride height, it's pointed at the output or just below the output. That would be about a foot of down travel. One inch in this, this is one inch equals a foot because this is, um, well, one slightly more, 1.2 inches equals a foot. So, um, and this is all one tenth scale. So just take that into consideration. So right now with, um, you know, about 12 inches of down travel, here's about six inches of down travel right there. It still looks pretty good. Um, 12 inches of down travel it's pointed a little bit but it's pretty much in line with the lower link but um your u joint will take care of that um misalignment that's not a problem but throughout the throughout the travel it looks really consistent really good and it points at the transfer case output the whole time so i'm thinking this is my favorite out of all the configurations we've done i build um my four links more off of a few basic rules that i follow and they work fine um Make them adjustable if you can by the uh, by the chassis and uh, upper link mounts that have the four or five holes, so you can play with your numbers. You know, on the tra you know one trail ride, try it here. Next trail ride, tr drop it one hole, drop it two holes. See what you know, see how it feels. See how it climbs. See if it reduces bouncing. Just you know, see how it feels in general. You know, and then you you can kind of get a feel for what it does, but. I'm more of a realist where I'm a seat of the pants kind of guy. I'm not too concerned about the numbers. The four link calculator shit, I do not like. I don't, it's too complicated. It's too confusing. And I'm not building a race car. So this is more of, this is for trail rigs, rock crawlers, trail crawlers, that kind of stuff. Hobbyists, you know, this isn't for the professional racer. So um, thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something over and out.